This is called Bhagavad Gita Sar. This particular Bhagavad Gita Sar is based on the purports of Bhagavad Gita as it is. There have been many editions of Bhagavad Gita, but the Bhagavad Gita, which is most widely distributed around the world, in practically speaking every language, is known as Bhagavad Gita as it is, which is published by the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust, composed and given purports by Srila Prabhupada, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. As I have already mentioned, it is translated to almost every language, Arabic, Swahili, so many languages, Bhagavad Gita, as it is, has been translated. So I've gone through Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita dozens of times, and in one of those, I selected all the excerpts where Prabhupada gives a summary explanation. So I took that summary explanation and I picked out wherever Prabhupada said, this is the essence of Bhagavad Gita. So that is today's lecture. First, I must offer my respects to my spiritual master who opened my eyes which was closed by ignorance and he immersively gave me divine eyes by which to understand this Bhagavad Gita. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaman Iti Namane Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine So we begin with chapter 11 of Bhagavad Gita, the final verse, text number 55. The 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is entitled The Vision of the Universal Form. And the final verse is as follows. Mat karmakrin mat paramo mad bhakta sanga vajataha nirvaira sarvabhuteshu yasamam eti pandava We remember that in chapter 10, after Arjuna accepted Krishna as God, after hearing the four nutshell verses of Gita in chapter 10, verses 11 through, excuse me, verses 8 through 11, those are the four seed or nutshell verses of Bhagavad Gita. After that is where Arjuna says to Krishna, you are Parang Brahma. You are the supreme spiritual entity. And Arjuna said, not only I accept you as the supreme, but other great sages, Asita, Devala, Vyas, they also accept you as Parang Brahma, the supreme spirit. Then in chapter 11, Arjuna asked Krishna, I want to see your universal form. How is it that you are pervading the whole cosmic manifestation? Krishna told Arjuna, you want to see my Vishva Rupa, but with your eyes you cannot see. I have to give you those eyes. I have to give you the eyes by which to see my universal form. So Krishna did that. 
And Arjuna saw the gigantic universal form. And when Arjuna was seeing the universal form, his hair is standing on end. He was experiencing different emotions, fear, wonder, bewilderment. He offered twice, he offered prayers to the universal form. First, he gave a description of what he was seeing, this universal form all around him with thousands of heads, thousands of eyes and arms and bellies. And what else did Arjuna see? All the Kauravas rushing into the mouth of the universal form, being smashed. And Arjuna said, Who are you? What is your mission? And Krishna says, I am time, and I have come to destroy everything and everyone. But then, Krishna says something to Arjuna. Nimatta matram bhava savyasachin. Arjuna, I want you to be my instrument in this fight. Whether you fight or not, nobody is going home. Only you five Pandavas and a few others. But the Kauravas, dead, gone destroyed whether you fight or not it is all my plan but Krishna told Arjuna I would like you to be my instrument in the fight the Bhagavad Gita continues and in chapter 18 Krishna says to Arjuna so Krishna Arjuna I've told you everything what is your decision free will he didn't force him. What is your decision? Arjuna said, yes. I accept this position as instrument. I will carry out your, ex your desire. And you know, you have all read or seen the video, Mahabharat. Battle wasn't 18 days. At the end, how many Kauravas left? How many Pandavas left? All five. Who became king? Yudhisthira. Just as Krishna had predicted. So, at the end of chapter 11, when Arjuna has seen enough of the universal form, he says, no more. Take away this ghastly scene because it is crippling my devotion for you. Please let me see you in your four-handed form, Narayan form. So Krishna took away the universal form and there he showed him his Narayan form with four hands. Kanchel, disc, club, lotus. Beautiful. And then Krishna resumed his original Somya Vapu. His beautiful form, like you see here in your temple. This is Saumya Vapu, the beautiful form, two-handed. And where is our Pujari? Pujari, come out, please. Where are you? Huh? Oh, I need him because he wants me to announce. Okay, when he comes back, let me know. Because he has told me that today's Sringar is very, very special Sringar. So I can't do it justice. Maharaj, tell them why this Sringar is named and why it is so special. Tell them. Murli Manohar Sringar. Yes. Topmost, only in Vraj. Yes. Not Dwaraka, not Mathura, not Kashi, Vrindavan. So today, see, 
This is why your temple is number one. Jai. So, take care of pujaris. Keep them fat and happy. Back on point. So this is Saumya Vapu, the beautiful form, which is rarely seen, rarely. So at the end of the 11th chapter, this verse, Krishna says, if you would please repeat, my dear Arjuna, one who engages in my pure devotional service, Free from the contaminations of fruitive activities and mental speculation, who works for me, making me the supreme goal of life, and who is friendly to every living being. Such a devotee certainly comes to me. So there are many things to be pointed out in this verse. And then we will read Prabhupada's comment. Why this verse? So, first thing is, he is saying pure devotional service. Pure devotion, devotional service is bhakti. But bhakti can be mixed or it can be pure. Just like you all know in India, you can get shud ghee or that other thing called dalda. You all know. I know. Or I remember in 1975, when I first went to Vrindavan, the temple told me, Prabhu, take this bucket and go to where they're having the milk from the cow. But the devotees told me, don't give the bucket. Go with, because he said, if you're not careful, they'll cheat you, give you half water, half milk. So the temple president said, go with them and make sure that you're getting all milk, not diluted. Am I right that happens? Yes. So there is contaminated or mixed bhakti. And in the Bhagavatam, in third canto, Lord Kapila explains 81 different kinds of mixed bhakti. 81. How's that? Three modes of nature. Mixed three times gives you nine. Again, by nine, 81. See? You even learn math in Srimad Bhagavatam. So, this modes of nature means that it is not pure. So therefore Krishna is saying, those who engage in pure devotional service. And then he explains, what makes it unpure? If there is fruitive intention, what's fruitive intention? Fruitive intention means, Krishna, I will worship you, but I want something in return, business. That's not pure devotion. That's not even love. When Krishna was speaking to the gopis the night of the Rasa dance, he says, that's not love, that's business. I do for you, and you give me. Just like we are seeing now, the presidential candidates, they're doing that. You give me your support, when I get elected, you get position. Like, and we see it. <laughs> if you're watching carefully, so many backroom deals are being made. So that means it's not pure. There's some fruitive. What's in it for me? And then mental speculation. Mental speculation means that, yes, I accept Krishna. I, ex I 
accept this path of bhakti, but I still have some notion how I will become one with God. I will become equal. Now, pure devotional service is like this. Krishna, I worship you whether you do anything for me or not. Krishna, I worship you even if I'm in a suffering condition still. Pure devotion. When Krishna was dancing with the gopis in the rasa dance, he left. He even left Radharani. But did they leave? No, they stayed. Even though Krishna left them, they stayed and prayed, Krishna, please come. So when Krishna saw that even though he had mistreated them, even though he had left them, they still remained fixed. Krishna says, now you have won me. And Krishna told the gopis, your pure love and devotion is impossible for me to repay. And he's God. Krishna says, your love and devotion for me is something I cannot repay even in a lifetime of Brahma, which is millions and millions of earth years. So that is what is called pure devotion. It's like Lord Chaitanya prays, Ashlishyava padaratang pinashtumam adarshanan marmahatang korotuva yata tata va vididhatu lampato mat prana natas tu sa eva napraha. The final prayer of Lord Chaitanya Shikshastakam is actually the words of Srimati Radharani. It's her words. Krishna, you can do whatever you want. Break my heart, trample over me, doesn't matter. You are my worshipful Lord. Unconditional. Unconditional. As I've said many times, you offer Radharani anything. You say to Radharani, we'll give you wealth, this, that, just give up Krishna. Radharani will curse you. She will not give up Krishna under any circumstance. Rukmini, same thing. When Rukmini wrote her letter, Rukmini was to be married to Shishupal. Yes, can you believe it? Rukmini was supposed to marry Shishupal. It was arranged by her brother, Rukmi. So Rukmini, she wrote a letter to Krishna. Rukmini had never seen Krishna. She had heard about Krishna from Narada and other sadhus who had come to her father's kingdom and described to her Krishna. And just by hearing about Krishna, Rukmini said, that's it. I'm not marrying anybody else. She wrote this in the letter. And at the end she wrote, and even if you think I'm not worthy, that is all right. I will take birth a hundred times in order to get you as my husband. She was that determined. And the only way that could happen, Krishna had to kidnap her. And Rukmini was very smart. She told Krishna, I want there to be no unnecessary violence. You come at that exact moment when I'm coming out of the Durga Mandap. When I'm coming out, you come and take me away. And that's exactly what Krishna did. At the exact moment, Rukmini was coming out of the temple after worshipping Ambal Mata. Krishna's chariot was there. She got on the chariot. Krishna drove away. And Shishupal didn't even chase after. What a chump. What a chump. Didn't even... And Jarasandha, he was going to chase after Krishna, but he realized, yeah, Krishna defeated me 17 times. Yeah, I think I'll sit this one out. Rukmi was the only one who chased after Krishna. 
and Rukmi would have been killed, but her brother, her sister Rukmini said, "No, no, don't. He's now our brother-in-law. You have to. He's now part of our family. You can't." And Balaram chastised Krishna. Krishna, what are you doing? Why are you going to kill Rukmi? He's now our in-law. You can't do this. And then Balaram said to Rukmini, "Why are you behaving like ordinary woman? Why are you lamenting? Stop this!" So Balaram was preaching on both sides. So Rukmi, he had to go away, leave his kingdom. But the point is, these examples show this is what Krishna is referring to: pure devotional service. That there is no circumstance where the devotee will give up Krishna for anything, good or bad. That is what Krishna is saying: pure devotional service. Under no circumstance will the devotee give up Krishna. And I would say, maybe many of you, if you were offered millions of dollars but just renounce Krishna, I'm sure many of you would say, "Go to hell." Right? Yes, I know many of you. You would not do that. Renounce Krishna, and we'll get no. So now, and then, one who works for Krishna does like you all now have a great opportunity to work for Krishna. How's that? How can all of you work for Krishna right now? Simple. Are you not building a new temple? There you go. You're working for Krishna. Either you're working by giving your money, or your brain, or your hard effort. Right? That's working for Krishna. Very good. Making me the supreme goal of life. Yes. For me, yes. I made that decision. In 1973, I decided that this life, I will make Krishna my goal, and who is friendly to every living being. We're not, we don't hate anybody. We like everybody. We want everyone to get Krishna's prasad, right? When people come for prasadam, do you turn anybody away? No. You want everyone to get Krishna's prasad. When、uh, Iskand does the Ratiyatra, they come dressed half naked. With the, come, take prasad. You know where they do at Venice Beach, right? Oh, you see all kinds of things. But that's the idea. Everyone can get Krishna's mercy. Everyone. I've given the example so many times. The sun does not discriminate. Oh, oh, him? No, I'm not. No, the sun is there for everyone. Krishna's mercy is there for everyone. But some people refuse to come out. They stay. They don't get the sun. Like right now, the sun is nice. Took a while, right? Sun was struggling today. Sri Sri Radha Raman Bhagavan Ki Jai. So if you do these things, Krishna says, "You come to me, not you become me. No, 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 not become. Come to me. Come to me means where? Where is Krishna? He's in his abode, Goloka Brindavan. You're going back home, back to Godhead. So here's Prabhupada's purport to this verse. So try to hear." And you'll see how Prabhupada explains. Chapters seven through twelve are the essence of Bhagavad Gita. The first six and last six chapters are like coverings for the middle six chapters, which are especially protected by the Lord. If one is fortunate enough to understand Bhagavad Gita, Especially these middle six chapters, in the association of devotees, then one's life at once becomes glorified beyond all penances, sacrifices, charities, speculations, etc. 
for one can achieve all the results of these activities simply by Krishna consciousness. Due to the contamination of material association through many, many millions of births, one's heart is always covered with the dust of materialism. But when one engages in devotional service and constantly chants Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, the dust on the mirror of the heart clears quickly and one is elevated to the platform of pure knowledge. The ultimate goal, or Vishnu, can be attained in this present age of Kali only by this chanting and by devotional service and not by mental speculation or needless argument. The pure devotee does not have to worry about the material necessities of life. He or she need not be anxious because when one removes the darkness from one's heart, everything is provided automatically by the Supreme Lord, who is pleased by the loving devotional service of the devotee. This is the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. By studying Bhagavad Gita, one can become a soul completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord and engage him or herself in pure devotional service. As the Lord takes charge, one becomes completely free from all kinds of materialistic endeavors. Anyone who wants to approach the Supreme of all the personalities of Godhead on the Krishna Loka planet in the spiritual sky and be intimately connected with the Supreme Personality, Krishna, must take this formula as stated by the Supreme Himself. Therefore, this verse, chapter 11, verse 55, is considered to be the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is a book directed to the conditioned souls who are engaged in the material world with the purpose of lording it over material nature and who do not know of the real spiritual life. The Bhagavad Gita is meant to show how one can understand one's spiritual existence and one's eternal relationship with the Supreme Spiritual Personality and teach one how to go back home, back to Godhead. Now, here is the verse which clearly explains the process by which one can attain success in one's spiritual activity. It is called devotional service. From the Bhagavad Gita, we can understand that to realize oneself by philosophical speculation and by meditation is one process. But to fully surrender unto Krishna is the highest perfection. This is the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. The path of religious principles according to the orders of social life and according to different courses of religion, may be a confidential path of knowledge. But although the rituals of religion are confidential, meditation and cultivation of knowledge are still more confidential. And surrender unto Krishna in devotional service, in full Krishna consciousness, is the most confidential instruction. Hari 
हराये नमः हरि हराये नमः हरि हराये नमः